Hello, Ramalta, and we're going to discuss this Victor Passmore catalogue raisonné. So the French put hold of this expression, catalogue raisonné, and it's, it's stuck when it comes to England and America. And what it means, catalogue raisonné, is it means it's a guide of, of the works of a particular artist. And it's meant to be conclusive, though they, they're not always conclusive. Um, and if you have an image which is in the catalogue raisonné, picture which is in the, in, in the catalogue raisonné, then it's authentic, authentication that it, that it is genuine. That doesn't apply so much to Passmore because the authentication is fairly easy with Passmore. But if it's a catalogue raisonné of an impressionist painting, for, painting for example, you, you will be pleased if your painting is in the, uh, the, the, the book. The books are subject to renewal and the, the, the boards which run these catalogue raisonnés these societies are the experts who will define what is right, what is not right. So with some of the artists, not this one particularly, some of the other artists, there are waiting lists of paintings which the owners want the societies to put into their next catalogue raisonné, the updated ones, and they will pay the board to examine the pictures and there is a published fee which you can you can look up in most cases and they will tell you in advance what they will charge you to value and to authenticate the picture so so this is an interesting thing to have victor passmore catalogue raisonné apart from the fact it's a catalogue raisonné it's a lovely book it's a large coffee table book who would say anyone and that was an expensive item to produce and just to go through it um you have a dust cover, you, you have a um, totally printed book, and as it's got some age to it, uh, it's got 600 pictures in it, it's um, got some blemishes on the, on the pages, some of the spots, particularly on the front page, and the front pages, but once you get inside the book, there are less blemishes as it goes along. So th the thing about this Passmore is everyone look, everyone either dislikes Passmore or, or pretends to understand him and uh, people think abstract painting was something that occurred in the 20th century they think of Picasso they think of Cubism they think of Passmore they think of a sundry artist but, but, but abstract painting is, is not new the uh, Celts in England for example would do the illustrations in the Bibles and the, the illustrations are abstract. There, there, are, there are swirling devices which are not necessarily to do with nature, and there are panels which are which are which are zigzags, which are not representing anything other than an abstract shape. So, so abstract isn't isn't new. But people get confused with abstract. If you wear a striped shirt, you're wearing an abstract shirt. If you have a car with a pattern seat in it, it's abstract. You're using a car which has abstract cloth in it. And once you start to look around you, you'll find that abstracts all over the place. Uh, it's in it's in architecture, it's in cloth, it's in decoration, it's in manufactured goods. So people are accustomed to, to abstract things, but when you present them with an abstract picture, they they sort of seem to forget that it's all around them. So you have this parcel catalogue raisonné, and the quality of the pictures is really good. And I suspect the time is is nearly here when these books will be cut up. For, uh, for reframing, because some of the images are, are very well printed and they have some antiquity to them because it's an old book. And um, the variety is striking really with Passmore. You've got from when he started, he did some very ordinary, literal, realistic pictures. He used to paint fields and churches and gardens. And a couple of examples here. These look like Dutch or French 18th century pictures, still lives. That looks like an Impressionist picture. And these are, these are by Passmore. And then it's one day he suddenly decides, I suspect he's bored of doing it, nothing more than that. I think he wanted, this is 1941, this is 1941. They're not abstract particularly. But around 1950, he goes into exploring abstract. And there is a sudden change and he, 
he, he uh, gets hold of swirls and crashing waves and spirals and he works over them repetitively and he refines them and he takes possession of the spirals as one of his devices but of course it's not a it's not a personal device it's a, it's a pagan uh, Neolithic device you find on tombs, not only in Malta, you find them in France, you find them in England and a couple in Wales and Ireland. So, so it is recirculation. Then he gets into this um, abstract stuff. Just looking at that one there, we have a very similar maquette of one like that. It's not that, it's that one, but it's one from the suite. So it gets into three dimensional pictures made of wooden blocks and it gets into perspex, mounting things on glass and perspex, which came, came about really with the advent of, of perspex as a material. So he's inventive, yes, he's very good, and he's challenging the norm and he's challenging our tastes. So, the book is a lovely book. We will sell this in Malta for 450 euros. And we have a number of them, actually. It's not the only one we have. I think they're, they're going to go up in price because of the fact they can be mount, uh, framed and mounted, some of the images. I think that they're, they are pretty important if you want to be a past more aficionado. I think you have to have one. And I think they're very interesting, apart from the fact it's a commercial item. Um, and we're buying and selling them. I think it actually is an, a very interesting thing. And I think that it's very high quality. We've sold four of those last week. We sold Calypso one, two, three, and four. These are 38 by 38 centimeters in the flesh, 1977. The, these allude to Malta, the, the caves of Calypso prints, whereas much of uh, Parsonal's work doesn't allude to Malta. He actually wrote a letter saying that his stuff doesn't particularly allude to Malta. So, so a, he was architect as well, and he designed urban settings. And if you're in Malta and you're interested, if you go and look at the Great Dane village, the Danish village in Gadira, Malia, you'll, you'll notice if you get hold of a plan, it's very, very, very similar to the Peter Lee development which he made early in his career. So, so, so I think it's interesting academically, I think it's interesting artistically. We, we've all got to get hold of this abstract stuff and try and understand it, not be frightened of it. Uh, and as I say, Passmore using abstract is doing no more than the monks did 2000 years ago, or the Aborigines. And if you're scared of abstract, consider Consider that when you're wearing striped clothing or getting in your Ford Fiesta with a, with a zigzag seat, it's the same thing. Thanks for, th thanks for having a look.